Hello and Happy New Year. Welcome to Blender as a video editor tutorial. We're going to go over all the basics that you need to know to start editing your videos with Blender. So first of all, what you want to do is get Blender and you can get Blender for free for any OS at blender.org. So go here, go to download and get the latest Blender. You should see Blender 3.0. If you're in the future, maybe there's a later, later version, but a lot of this stuff should still work. It's not a huge file, 203 megabytes is pretty small for a video editor these days. Once you have it installed, you should just have it. So I'm not gonna walk through the whole install process, but that's essentially where we're picking up now. All right, so once you have Blender, go ahead and open it, and you should get a nice Blender layout thing. This is going to start with your defaults. You can save the defaults later. Uh, you're going to see some stuff down here, like new file. These are all just help things. And if you really like Blender, you can donate to the development fund. If you really like my videos, you can donate to me with uh, uh, the join button here on YouTube. So instead of hiring a video editor, you can learn it from me and just give me $3 instead of paying hundreds to a video editor you can also support me on patreon and if you want source code to my private stuff join the source level i appreciate you guys and also don't forget to like and hit subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new stuff now that that's out of the way let's dive into it so you can just click anywhere in the scene and this little helper thing will pop will go away you can bring it back up anytime by going to the top left is blender icon it's kind of hard to see splash screen and there it is all right but we're gonna focus on video editing blender can do a ton of stuff it can model it can animate we're not going to worry about that uh, if you're new to it and want to learn more there are lots of other tutorials out there and also let me know what you would like to see so we're just going to go straight to video editing there's a couple different ways to do this and I'm just going to cover the one I usually use. So you see all these tabs at the top? They're kind of workflow setups. You can customize these window layouts. It's just a Blender thing. And all these are just different customized layouts and viewports and stuff. So one of them, you got to hit this plus button, is video editing. And there's rendering and video editing. We're going to go to actual video editing here. And it takes us to this screen. Now, this is the important screen you want to go to. If you only use Blender for video editing, you can, once you have your basic setup, you can go to File and uh, Defaults, Save Startup File. So you can default it to one of the, whatever of these you want. You don't have to have the default cube. Now, let's talk about these different sections here because this is kind of important. Uh, top left. This is a file area. You can see your path on your drive. So keep in mind that this is just a default layout. If you don't like any of this stuff, you can click up in the top left and change it to something else. And if you want to make more, you can click on the top right of any of these. Say pull to the right from an edge. There we go. We want to collapse these all in. So it looks like if you drag into another one from one, you can collapse them in. Kind of a little wonky, takes a little get used to. Let's put this back to file browser. A little bit of a different layout this time. That's fine though. Uh, you can change that with view if you want. And uh, these buttons. So a lot of little stuff like that, but okay. We don't want to get stuck on that too much. And over here, we have your actual video editing viewport. You can see it's set to this little uh, movie looking thing. And we got preview right here. Let's just leave that preview. And we have some buttons here. We're not going to worry about too much because I don't think we're going to use those. Now over on the right, we have properties. Properties is super important. This has a bunch of tabs over here for different things about your scene and your layout and all that. And we don't really need to mess with any of these. A lot of these are for material and 3D scenes and stuff. The only one we really want is this one here and it's called output properties now we need to change this because when we export our video or render our video it's going to do it in a certain way and that's determined by how you set these output properties i'm going to just show you how i like to do it and uh, you can change as needed so mine are typically for a 1080 
uh, YouTube video. So the resolution here says 1920 by 1080. We're going to leave that aspect ratio one by one. We're going to leave that uh, render region. We're just going to leave all these. Don't change the frame rate. I'll talk about frame rate here when we're importing videos because it is important as well. So we're going to skip over all these and go all the way down to where it says output. Now, by default, your output directory is just slash temp. You can change this by clicking this little uh, folder on the right and picking your, your, the volume, your drive, and your path. I like to save it to one of my external drives called LMAS and then rendered. So I'm just going to click those and hit accept, hit accept. Now you can see it has that here. So when we render, that's where everything's going to go. Still really a lot more important stuff here. So let's pay close attention. File format. It's defaulted to PNG. So when you render, it's going to give you a whole bunch of PNGs, which might be what you want, depending on what you're doing. You got to change this to FFmpeg. That's the one that seems to be, well, it even says in the tooltip here, the most versatile way to output video files. So FFmpeg is very nice. Stick with RB RGB unless you want black and white. That's up to you. And now encoding. This is actually really important too. So we want to expand this little encoding tab and make sure we get a proper setup here. Audio. If you have audio along with your video, you have to change this codec. It defaults to no. So when you render with Blender, if you don't change all this stuff, you're going to get a bunch of PNGs into that temp folder with no audio. So yeah, you got to change this to AAC. Seems to be very good. So we're going to stick with AAC. We're going to leave all this stuff the same. And that should be all we need to do here. You can mess with the quality a little bit. If you, the higher you go, the bigger your file, but it'll be a little bit more quality. But the higher quality you get, the exponentially larger your video file gets. So usually medium quality is just fine unless you want the finest, most highest quality. And that should be it for the settings here. All right, now let's look at the bottom here. We're going to see a few more sections that are important. We see the sequencer, and this is set to sequencer by this stuff here. As you can see, it's the same video tab, but this one's sequencer as where this one is preview. You can also have just one and do sequencer and preview and have it split it. Uh, so however you want to do that's fine. We're going to leave it how it was. So the sequencer is where you put your video files, and you can see a timeline at the top. So it has frames. You can see if you look at this closely, you'll see it has seconds on the first, you know, the zero zero there. And the second part is how many frames. Because right now we're set to 24 frames per second. So it's going to flip through 24. You see this little plus 11. We're on 11th frame and so on. Once we get to the 24th, it starts over. So you can see we have nice little frame sections here every second. Uh, now I wanted to talk about the frame rate. In your videos because this this is where a lot of people get hosed <laughs> we'll say so if your frame rate doesn't match the video file that you're bringing in your audio is going to be shorter or longer and your video is going to seem it's just not going to render right you need to get this frame rate matched with your video file that way everything lines up nice so let's go get a file let's just go uh, up and up again, and up again, and up again, uh, or to the C drive. Well, we ultimately want to go to our E drive, so we're just going to type it in here because that's where I store a lot of my videos. Uh, you're, you just need to go to where you store your videos. Now, if you don't want to mess with this at all, I'm just going to leave a little caveat right in here. What you can do is you could just open up your Windows file browser and just go to it manually and drag it in. So you can drag it in from your file explorer rather than using this, it's the whole point. Either way is fine. E, look for my recording drive. Looks like it's over here. I have a layout, kind of strange. And there we go, there's all the files. Uh, you can click on this one for display mode if you get a little preview of them. But all right, at this point we just need to pick one. So let's grab this Magic the Gathering one. I don't know what this is. And you just drag, drag it in here, boom. And now what happens is your frame rate 
auto adjust to the very first video you bring in. As you can see, just by me dragging this in here, it switched to 60. Now this is important, so listen closely, because a lot of people get messed up on this. All your videos need to have the same frame rate. Blender does not do well with multiple different frame rates. It doesn't automatically adjust videos. You need to do that on your own. There are ways to do this. There are tools. Uh, one of my favorite is Handbrake. Handbrake allows you to convert video files, allows you to change frame rates and, and stuff like that. Uh, it's a free tool. That's just one way of doing it. There are some other tools, but Handbrake is a nice, easy, free way that allows you to to get the, your frame rates matched up if they don't match up. If they're already all the same, it's fine. You don't need to worry about it. So it's only when you're mixing and matching videos that you need to get them all into the same frame rate. Okay, so we got our video here. It's doing this. You saw that here. You can see there's something going on here. Blender is executing something. Get that out of the way. And you can see it down here at the bottom too. It says building proxies. You used to have to manually build proxies. And now proxies build automatically when you drag a video in. Now what this is, is just like little temporary files that help you navigate along this timeline faster. Because when proxies are built, it basically has them all saved, all these frames saved and ready in a smaller format so that it can flip through your video quicker. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot, of, a lot more stuttering without the proxies. If you don't want the proxies, maybe you're already fast enough or anything, you can just hit this X and stop the job. All right. In our case, we're going to go ahead and stop the job because I don't particularly want those right now. This is just a demo. You can see the video is not lined up to the start. So now we're gonna get into how to edit and cut videos and just do some, some basic tweaking to your videos here. And this is gonna get a little bit detailed. I'm actually gonna hide this uh, file thing for now. We might bring in more files later, but we'll do it via our operating system uh, file explorer anyway. So that's going to be fine. So this sequencer, you if it's too small, like if you can, you know, this is a really long file, but how do you keep going over? Well, you got to drag this bottom thing. If you click these little dots, it expands out and makes it wider. All right, so let's stretch this to see our actual whole video. And then you can move it around just by dragging somewhere else. But these little dots on the edge, uh, zoom you in and out. You can do that with mouse wheel too, but if you're on like a laptop without a mouse wheel, you gotta do these dots. And you can do the same thing for the vertical space too, and you can see what track you're on, one, two, et cetera. Now we see two files, look, it looks like two files, it's only one, and it's because one of these is a video and one of these is the audio that goes with the video. So if you want, you can like delete the audio. And I did that by clicking it and then pressing the delete key on my keyboard. So you can just wipe out a part of the video if you don't want it. The audio is terrible. You can just delete it. No big deal. We want to cut and do a little rendering. Now, as by default, the render area is only like a few seconds. It's this small gray area you see right there. If we hit render right now, that's what it would render just this little section. So we want to do a few things. First of all, uh, since we kind of want to make this a sample, I'm going to zoom way in. Bear with me a second. All right. So we want to like line it up to the beginning, right? So you can just double, you can click and drag into this box select to get both of them. You can also use shift or control. And control click selects the matching pair. Uh, shift lets you individually select stuff. So once you have stuff selected, you can just click and drag it. And we can line this up. You can see it says the frame right there uh, that it's starting at. So we just want to start this at like frame one or zero. One's fine. So now our video will actually start at the first frame. And uh, it's only going to go for four seconds, it looks like. So after like four and a half seconds or so, it, uh, it stops the video. And that's all we get. So to change this end time, you got to change the start and end down here. And you can see your current frame right there. So you go to where you want it to stop, basically. You don't need to necessarily do this right away, but at some point before you render it, you got to change this because this is the render section. This is about a 40 minute long video. So if we go to the very last frame, we see that it's like 
147,000, it's a lot of frames, 60 per second. So you can grab this number and put it on the end and boom, our render area extends and now it would render the whole area. I haven't done any cuts or edits or anything, so this is still like the same video file as before. Just as a quick example, because I get this one a lot too. When you want to render, you change this render area to the desired area. Yeah, you might want the full thing at the end, but at some point you might say, hey, I just want to render this little section for something else. So you change your start frame to where you want, change your end frame to where you want, and now you can render just that section. So how do you render? Make sure you have these outputs set up how you want. Get that area selected how you want it with the start and end, and then go up here to render, render animation, or press Control F12. And this will start rendering. I'm going to hit it. I'm going to cancel. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm just going to hit it for example. Render. It brings up this little uh, result thing where it's going to show you how it's going. But if you go to where it's saved or where you chose the output for me, it was rendered. You'll see it right there with your specifics. Now don't mess with this file and you probably actually just want to like let your computer do its thing and walk away. But there you go. Thank you.